For this video, we're going to look at quotations, particularly direct quotations. So when we quote somebody in our writing, we make our writing more vivid, more interesting, and also we allow somebody else's words to come into our writing. So in a way, our writing's more informed as well. Now, I've gone back to that same passage I used for that lovely short sentence, Jesus wept. It's from uh, the book of John, chapter 11. And I've extended the section we're looking at. So we're looking at verses 35 to 37, where John starts quoting. Jesus wept, so the Jews said, see how much he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Now what John's doing is quoting what people are saying at the time that Jesus is doing this weeping. He's making it more journalistic because obviously what the surrounding people are saying really changes the impact and the meaning of what's going on. Now for a start, when we write as musicians, we're going to use a convention where we introduce a quote not with a comma but with a colon with these two dots on top of one another. And by doing that, we're actually following the procedure of newspapers. My justification for that is that as musicians, chances are the kind of writing that we might do could be in the area of broadcasting or media. Uh, and I just like the colon, it's a bit more punchy. And because it's associated with newspapers and less associated with the kind of commas that are used in novels, uh, it just feels a more direct kind of writing. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Now, we can see John at the time quoting these Jews. Of course, we can quote John. We can quote from his book. Because he wrote the book, which is as good as saying something. So we can quote John, and we can actually also quote John quoting the Jews at the time talking. So we can have these layers of quotes, and we've got protocols to follow for each of these layers. So let's look at our first way of quoting, and we're going to use that wonderful simple sentence. And I'm going to write out two quotes... And we're just going to look at the difference of where I put the full stop. So for my first quote, we're going to write, John writes, colon, double quote marks, Jesus wept, full stop, double quote marks. John writes, Jesus wept. Now, if I was to just use the word wept and actually take the idea of who was doing the weeping into my sentence, maybe use a different name for Jesus, I might come up with a sentence like this. John writes that Christ wept. John writes that Christ, quote Mark, wept, end quote, full stop. Do you see the difference there? In this top one, I've put my full stop and then the end quote mark. In this bottom one, I've put the end quote mark and the full stop after it. Why have I done this? The answer is I'm following the British Convention, which is different, by the way, from the American Convention. I tend to go with British things when it comes to English. The British Convention is look within the quote, and if you've made a complete sentence, and our first video uh, defined this as a complete sentence, then that sentence needs to be finished with some sort of punctuation. If it's the end of your sentence, put a full stop. If your sentence goes on, you'd put a comma or some other kind of uh, punctuation. But the real crucial thing is that your punctuation goes before the quote mark. 
You'll see here though, let's look within the quotation marks here, I've just got the word wept. So I've got a past tense verb, but I haven't got a subject within the quote. I have not made a complete sentence, and so no punctuation happens before the end quote mark, and this quote just gets embedded inside the grammar of this sentence here, and the full stop comes to finish the sentence after the quote. So John writes, Jesus wept, full stop, end quote. John writes that Christ wept, end quote, full stop. Right, let's up the complexity now. Let's look at quotes within quotes. As I was saying, we can quote John, but John was quoting the words that were said by these Jews on the scene. So I've made a sentence down the bottom here, and what I've done is just taken the second sentence here, and I've put that into a quote within a quote. So as recorded by John, that's a signifier that we're going to quote from John's book. So I'm going to need my standard colon here and my double speech marks to open. I'm going to need a capital actually because I'm starting a sentence. As recorded by John, some Jews said, and then we go into the words of the Jews. By the way, the original words were some of them said, but that's not clear enough for my writing, so I've just put square brackets, and I've put my own word in place of of them, so I've got some Jews said rather than some of them said. So that square bracket just shows that I've manipulated the text a little bit to make it make sense. Some Jews said, now we're going into the words of the Jews. Now we've already used our double quote marks. So here, to signify we're going into a quote, we do another colon, and then we're going to use a single quote mark. Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Question mark. Now, I've got to decide, is that a full sentence? In which case my punctuation, which here is a question mark, is going to go within my single quote mark? Or was it not a full sentence, in which case my quote mark ends and then my punctuation happens? Well, I've got a verb, could not... So it's a negative verb, but it's still a verb. I've got a subject, which is he, because who, who are we talking about? Who's the one that couldn't seem to do this act? Well, it's he, uh, which is just referring to Jesus earlier. So we've got a subject, in this case the pronoun he. We've got the verb could not. So we're a complete sentence. So I can now finish this quote. Now because I had a single quote mark, I'll put a single quote mark. But I've also got to finish the double quote. Because we are quoting John, who is then quoting those Jews. So I've got to finish our quote. And so I'm going to put double quotation marks there to conclude our quote. And so we get the phrase, as recorded by John, some Jews said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? And then my single quote ends, and then my double quote ends. So what about question marks when quoting? They can be a little bit tricky. Let's have a look at my sentence that I've written here, where I've just quoted two words from those Jews. Do you agree with the Jews in John's Gospel who concluded that Jesus' tears shed at Lazarus' tomb proved that Christ loved him? Now, my phrase, do you agree, must have a question mark at the end of it because I've set that up as a question. Do you agree? So I've got to have a question mark at the end of this, but does the question mark go within the quote marks or without? We're going to put it outside for a couple of reasons. 
One of them is that loved him is not a complete sentence. So we've already determined that the punctuation goes outside the quote marks if we have not created a complete sentence. The other reason is that a question mark hasn't been used in the original. And so when we quote that, we're going to put the question mark after just to indicate that it wasn't a question that these Jews were asking here. It was a statement, see how he loved him. So we keep that statement consistent because the question actually comes in my writing, not in John's writing. Do you agree with the Jews who concluded that the tears proved that Christ loved him? So that's why the question mark is going after, to indicate that it is part of my question, which is in this wider sentence, outside of the quotation. This next situation may not come up for you very often, but it's worth taking a look at anyway. What happens if we have a question in our writing, but also the quote that we've used has a question in it as well? So to illustrate this, I've taken this question here. Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Question mark. So I've got that question there. So I need to have a question mark because there is a question contained within the quote and that is a complete sentence. So it needs that punctuation within the quote marks. But I've asked a wider question, do you agree with this? So, in theory, my wider question needs a question mark as well. Do you agree with the Jews who asked, could not Jesus have kept Lazarus from dying? But just because of how ridiculous that looks, the convention is just remove that outer question mark completely. So if you have a question within a quote and you place that in a question of your own, put the question mark within the quote marks and that concludes your question so that you don't have that silly double up of a question mark.